Hello to you all great 11s. I hope you're up and ready to learn more with us. This is your favorite show ever, Learn Extra Live, and we are doing physical sciences. My name is A.B. Abram, and I'm with Phil. How are you, Phil? I'm great, thanks to you, A.B. I'm great. It is the last term, and uh, there's no more time now. Oh, absolutely. These guys should be in it for the exams this term and doing their final preparations. Exactly. We mm. don't have any more time. But talking about revision, hey, we have an, a, an exciting innovation uh, that is... Uh, Probably brought to you by Samsung and Mindset. It is all about revision, helping you guys revise even more and also making sure that the content that we have is accessible. So if you are a Mindsetter that is using a Samsung tablet or a Samsung premium smartphone, get over it because we are having a Samsung Learning Hub. Let me show you how it looks like. We have videos that you can see on the Learning Hub with notes. Basically, what you need. To what you have is a two screen, which is something rare that you could find having your video. At the same time, you're able to browse through your document. The document is purely interactive. You can answer your questions, type your answers, and then later on, you can check your solutions by simply going over the document and check the solutions. How nice is that? So cool. But let me take you through on how you get to that. If you are using a Samsung tablet, remember I told you you need to get the Learning Hub, which is on your applications. You have a book of shelves with the uh, books that I or the material that I have purchased. Otherwise, if you need to purchase and look for more information and more content, go to the store. Then in the store, you're going to look for brands. Under brands, you look for Mindset Learn. And then in Mindset Learn, it's all the videos that we have. Make sure that Mindset says you look for your favorite because we have all the subjects and you can buy them f all cheap uh, from 8 Rand 37. You buy them, click the video that you like, view it, buy it. That's how simple it is. And then have it on your own machine. But I must say that we are giving away a voucher worth 100 Rand to all the Mindset To access that voucher, you simply register to the new application. Uh, to everyone that is reg registering from today, they'll be getting that voucher. Quickly, before I end this, let me show you that if you are buying a certain product that you like, it will ask you to pay using your voucher or your credit card. That's just how it works. Awesome innovation in the must say that more is to come. Mindset and Samsung is bringing you awesome and great innovations. But for now, we are having a lesson. And Phil, what are we doing today? Guys, uh, today we're dealing with some basic redox. We're talking about reduction and oxidation, and I'm really excited. This is the first part of a two-piece lesson. Um, so the great 11s, and even some great 12s that are watching can watch us for some great redox chemistry today. Nice one. Before we get to it, let me tell you the lengths that are so important. You should be knowing them by now. Four of them. One is that you can join us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Extra. Like the page and then let's communicate on Facebook. Otherwise, secondly, Twitter. Follow us at Lenextra. La uh, thirdly, uh, download your notes all for free on lenextra.co.za forward slash live. And now to help you, lastly, with our, if you're struggling with anything, any question that you have, go on our help help desk and it's now available also on Mixit. Get on it, get on it search for the uh, under general contact, search for Len Extra, and then you'll see the help desk submit your questions and we'll help you through. Phil, let's get to it. Okay, well guys, today we're talking about reduction and oxidation. Today's lesson is all about electrons. Okay, so guys, uh, when we're talking about redox chemistry, reduction and oxidation, guys, I want you guys to be focusing all about the electrons. Now, some of you might have done this in school so far, and we're talking about reduction, oxidation, and it all sounds very complicated. Guys, please don't panic, because we're going to guide you through all of this, and this is going to be an incredibly easy section, and we're going to be talking about it together, so don't panic. And uh, yeah, well, let's get right into it. Okay, so today what we're going to be dealing with is these two words, reduction and oxidation. So guys, this is the business end of this chemistry. And as I said, this is part one of two, guys. I'm going to be with you for the next two weeks, and we're going to be dealing with these two words, reduction, oxidation. Okay, so now today is all about the words. We are going to be making some notes about what reduction and oxidation really means. We're going to be talking about some oxidation numbers. I'll even teach you what's going on inside your bloodstream, and hopefully if we get a little bit of time, I can show you a couple of cool things. Okay, so now let's start getting into uh, what's on today's menu. We are dealing with what reduction and oxidation are. Okay, so reduction and oxidation are the words for today. So reduction and oxidation. And also what we're going to be doing is we're going to be dealing with why it's called reduction and oxidation. So a lot of people don't really understand why I use this word reduction. 
And why uses word oxidation? Has it got anything to do with oxygen? Well, the answer is sometimes. Sometimes, but not necessarily every time. Now, that sounds a little bit cryptic, but I want to keep you guys guessing for a little while longer. Later on in our lesson, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be dealing with oxidation numbers. Now, oxidation numbers is not strictly in every exam that you're going to see about redox, but it's vital for your understanding of what redox actually is. Now, these words, reduction and oxidation, actually come from oxidation numbers. And I want to talk to you about that as the lesson goes on. Okay, so reduction and oxidation. So we started planting these words inside your head. And now we're going to deal with some oxidation numbers. Fantastic. And then, this is the real business end of redox chemistry, is writing half reactions. Okay, guys, half reactions lie at the heart of every redox um, exam, every type of question, and even the experiments which you do with half reactions. Now, we're going to be dealing with oxidation and reduction separately right at the end of this. But guys, first of all, this is something that I like to do at the beginning of each one of these complicated sections. You might say, why on earth am I learning about redox? But guys, redox is happening inside you at the moment. Reduction and oxidation is absolutely vital. Reduction and oxidation drives photosynthesis. It drives, drives the cellular respiration, which is keeping me awake. The reason that I eat food is because of redox. And guys, I'm a big fan of food and breathing. Those are my two favorite things. I do them all the time. <laughs> what about you, Abram? Uh, same here. <laughs> okay, so AB says he loves eating and he loves breathing. I'm attached to these things. Guys, that is redox chemistry happening inside your body. So you might say, okay, redox does not apply to me. If it doesn't apply to me, unfortunately, that means that you're dead. Okay, so that's not the case, and you're watching us, and I'm very glad about that. Okay, so now let's start with the textbook type definitions, and we're going to deal with it, and we're going to start getting into the reasons why we call it reduction and oxidation. Okay, so now specifically, this is all, I mean, the entire section over here is all about electrons, guys. Okay, now just to sort of get your head thinking about this, why am I talking so much about electrons? Now, electrons are on every single atom. They're inside every one of the trillions and trillions of atoms inside your body. Electrons are what governs chemistry. Now, any time which I take an electron off one element and put it onto another, that is a redox reaction. Now, not every reaction is a redox uh, reaction, and I'm going to show you how to spot one. But reduction and oxi uh, oxidation reactions involve, and this is your textbook definition, it's the transfer of electrons. So when things transfer, they leave one place to go to another. So redox chemistry is all about the giving and taking of electrons. So one element is going to say, I'm not, not really using my electron. Here, you have it. And then the other atom says, ah, I need an electron. Fantastic. Now, you might remember some of this stuff from grade 10. Now, in grade 10, we started talking about things called valency. Now, valency had something to do with the outside shells of electrons. Now, we're not going to spend too long on that. But suffice to say, all that I'm going to say is that some atoms really love their electrons, and some atoms really don't like their electrons. And we're going to deal with that process, the transfer of electrons. And the transfer of electrons, the giving and taking of electrons, is redox chemistry. It's no more complicated than that, guys. Okay, so now we're going to deal with those two processes. The giving and the taking. Okay, so one of those two, when you transfer things, one is going to gain and one is going to lose. Okay, so now we're going to start dealing with these words and I want you to write this down if you're taking notes or if you're really smart, you're following AB on the, on the Facebook. I'm sure that he's posting bits and pieces out of the notes. Yes. He always does. He's fantastic. And then we're going to deal with the gain of electrons and the loss of electrons. Okay, so now we're going to deal with the one which is greedy. The one which gains electrons, the one which <coughs> gobbles them all up. That is a process of reduction. Now you might say, okay, well, oh, that's kind of weird. It's getting something and it's reducing. I'm going to explain this word reduction in a moment. Okay, but one of these two in the transfer is going to lose electrons. Now this process is called oxidation. Now, what we're going to do, and if I get a little bit of a chance later on, we're actually going to do this reaction. It says, let's burn some magnesium in a redox reaction. You might say, I don't do this every day, but let's just start to take a look at what it means to burn something. So, what do you need to burn something? Well, I need something to burn, first of all, and that's magnesium. 
Okay, and we're going to be dealing with some magnesium a little bit later on if we get our way. So magnesium. Now, when you burn something, you're going to need oxygen. And I've chosen oxygen because oxygen is all around us, and it's the reason that we've got this word oxidation. Now, you might say, well, where have I seen oxidation happening before? Well, guys, it's happening all around you. Anytime you've looked at a piece of metal, which has got some rust on the top, you're busy watching redox chemistry happen. It's very, very slow. There's reduction in oxidation happening inside your body, as I mentioned earlier. And the reason that your blood is red is because of redox chemistry. This is how far-reaching redox chemistry actually is. It's probably one of the most vital pieces of chemistry. And guys, if you're busy uh, following us on your cell phones, and if you're involved in the Samsung thing, you're busy using a tablet, right? Okay. And Samsung devices are powered by these batteries, and batteries are powered by redox reactions. They're pushing the electrons through all of those circuits, giving that wonderful picture. Okay, so magnesium needed some oxygen. So we're going to oxidize magnesium, and this is where the words come from, and we'll, we'll rewrite this in some pieces a little bit later on to make sure that we can see that this is a redox reaction happening. Now, somehow, there's an agreement between magnesium and oxygen that they want to join to each other. If you remember your grade 10 chemistry, what happens when a metal and a non-metal join is they're going to form a compound. Now, this compound is going to have some ions inside it. We'll discuss the ions a little bit later on. But when you oxidize magnesium, surprise, surprise, you get magnesium oxide. So these words are all linked to each other. So I know that oxygen has something to do with the original meaning of oxidation. Just bear in mind that oxidation is not always treating with oxygen. Now, this reaction behind us is not balanced, and I hate leaving a reaction unbalanced. Two magnesiums react with one oxygen molecule, and somehow we form magnesium oxide. Now, I know that this is a redox reaction, but it's difficult for you guys to say, oh, electrons were transferred inside there, and I think I kind of understand. But let's get into some of the reasoning behind magnesium being oxidized to make magnesium oxide. Now, you can see this reaction happening a lot of places. Like I said, if you walk outside and you see a rusty piece of metal or you see a rusty car or something which has been lying in the grass for a while out in the rain and the oxygen, some metal has joined onto oxygen and undergone oxidation. Now, you might say, well, Phil, how do I see the electrons going inside here? But guys, this is a very trick, uh, clever trick of chemistry. We can actually start to investigate using something that we already know to see that redox is actually happening. Now, the really nice thing about redox chemistry is that it's full of colors. Now, redox chemistry very often will change the color specifically of metals. So magnesium, which is a gray metal, is going to change into a white powder when I oxidize it, and that's something really amazing. The metal, which was going to rust, was silver on the surface, and now it's orange or yellow or red or any one of those colors, and that's due to redox chemistry taking place. So anytime a metal changes its color, you know that redox has taken place. So that's a really nice visual way of seeing that electrons have changed hands. But now let's turn our attention to the reaction which I've written on the board behind me. Let's take a much closer look at what's going on with magnesium and oxygen. Then we're going to get on to why these words are called oxidation and reduction. Okay, so now we're burning some of the magnesium. So one of the two is going to gain or lose electrons. We've already established that, and I'm going to keep that on the board for the moment. Okay, now... I'm going to highlight this reaction, and we're going to see why we said that this is a redox reaction. Okay, so one of them is going to gain electrons, and that was reduction, and one of them is going to lose electrons, and that was oxidation. Now, guys, before I go any further, I just want to show you a little trick that a lot of my grade 11s and 12s really like to remember that relationship. That's oil rig. So this word oil rig, you might say, okay, well, we're South Africa, we don't have any oil rigs. But it's a very useful set of words. Okay, here's how it works. Oil is oxidation is the loss of electrons. So there we go, oxidation is loss. And reduction is gain. So it's really easy to remember that oxidation is lost, and reduction is gain. So that's a really easy way of figuring out which one is going on. But now it's not quite as simple as that. How do I figure out if electrons have been lost? Well, this requires a little bit of investigation of my reaction behind me. So we're going to figure out which one lost 
which one gained, which one was oxidized, which one was reduced. And I'm going to get used to some of the terminology involved here. Okay, so let's go back to our board. Let's go back to our reaction of the magnesium, which is reacting. Okay, so now how do I know that this is a redox reaction? Now, re redox, if you haven't figured it out by now, is a combination of the words reduction and oxidation. Now, we know some things about my magnesium. Magnesium was an element before we started filling with it. Before we added oxygen to magnesium, it was neutral. Ah, there's something about the charges. Anytime something is neutral, it has a charge of zero. That means that the plus charges and the minus charges inside magnesium are absolutely neutral. Okay, all right, so we're getting somewhere over here. We know that magnesium is neutral. There's the same protons and electrons. It adds up to a charge of zero. But now what happens when magnesium goes from being an element to being inside a compound? Okay, now that's where the trick comes in. What did we learn in grade 10? In grade 10, we learned that when metals made compounds with non-metals, that they took on a charge by giving away electrons. If you take a look at where magnesium is on the periodic table, we know that magnesium loses two electrons to make a two positive ion. Okay? Now, if you can't remember all of these, we know that there are a couple of rules which can help us. So after the reaction, it takes on a charge of two plus. Now, you might say, why is it not written positive two? Okay, so let me just see why I write it as Mg2 plus and not positive two over there. What does this 2 plus actually mean? Let's do a little bit of grade 10 revision. That 2 positive means that I have two extra plus charges. Now, how do I get to two extra positive charges? Now, I can't go and add two protons to magnesium because then it won't be magnesium anymore. You cannot change the number of protons. So how do I get left with positive 2? That means that magnesium has lost two electrons. It carried the same number of protons, and let's actually do a quick count. If you've got a periodic table near you, let's actually do a quick count of magnesium. Magnesium will always have the same number of protons. It will have 12 protons. It's always got 12 protons, even when I make a charge or an ion out of it. Now, what happens when it forms an ion is it gets 10 electrons by losing those two electrons. Where did those electrons go? Well, this is where the trick comes in. Okay, so we now know that magnesium has lost two electrons. Okay, so it's lost two electrons in the negotiations. Now, there's only one place where those electrons might have gone. The oxygen. The oxygen has taken them away. Now, this links up very nicely with the chemistry from grade 10. We know that oxygen is hungry for electrons. It's completely electronegative. It likes to gain electrons and keep them to itself. So over here, magnesium was oxidized. It was treated with oxygen, and oxygen came and took away those electrons. So magnesium was oxidized. And we know that oxidation is the loss of electrons, while reduction is the gain. But we'll get to that reduction in a moment. So I'm going to ask you to figure out what happened to the charge of oxygen when it underwent this reaction. I think it's time for a break though, so they can figure this out and maybe even post it onto the page. What yes, do you think? I'd love that because I'm waiting for the mindsetters. And also I'm so happy that uh, there's a mindsetter by the name of Neo Mfukeng, who happens to be my friend also. Uh, he's a mindsetter and he has redeemed his 100 Rand free voucher Fantastic. using his Samsung tablet. So mindsetters, get out, it's real, so you can see now. It's not just me having my own voucher, you can also have yours. Otherwise, check you out after this.
Welcome back, Mindsetters. Now we understand that it is term four, the last term of the year, and we are doing some promotions. So we are promoting you as grade 11s from the 14th of October to a new time slot, to the grade 12s time slot. So you no longer be called now the pre-matriculants, but you are our matriculants. On the 14th of October, we are having a new time slot for you, grade 11s. Your, t your new time will be from 6 o'clock up until 7 o'clock. If you're a grade 10 that is watching, also you're being promoted. Your time slot is the 5 one this one to six o'clock for from the 14th of October but otherwise welcome back and welcome to all those mindsetters that are just joined us right now such as Busiso Gabriel who's, who says um, I was thinking about mindset and, and the fact that I'm nothing without mindset but a wandering slave Oh, well, no, no, <laughs> no, we <laughs> not a wandering slave. Okay, well, hopefully we're empowering. That is looking for education. And absolutely, knowledge. absolutely. Okay, well, guys, before the break, I left you with a little bit of a brain teaser, and some of you guys have been responding fantastically on the page. What have they been saying, Abby? Um, so far, to say is the oxygen will have a negative as a result of getting electrons from magnesium, also lungsani and other mindsetters, benzene. Oh, fantastic. That. These guys are switched on, eh? Mm, mm. Okay, well, fantastic, guys. Well, you heard it from some of the other mindsetters. Join us on the page and you're sharing these wonderful answers. Okay, so if you're just joining us, before the break, I told you about Magnesium's story. Magnesium went into the negotiation and had two extra electrons. It's in group two, which gives us that clue. Okay, so take a look at your periodic table. If you've got Magnesium in group two, it's got two extra electrons to give away. But now, what about oxygen? Oxygen is in group 16 or 6, depending on which table you look at. So what's going to happen to oxygen? Now, if you remember from grade 10, oxygen likes to gain two electrons to complete its energy levels. It likes to take two extra electrons. Now, if it's got eight protons and it takes another two electrons to add to its eight already, it's also going to have 10 electrons. Okay, so what does that mean for oxygen? Well, let's deal with the oxygen. It too was neutral. Okay, so it was sitting there very nicely, happily, sitting in the air, waiting to be breathed, hoping to be uh, taken in by somebody's lungs or burned in some magnesium. And before the reaction, now after this reaction, it has a charge of two negative. Now, how does it get a charge of two negative? Let's do a little bit of counting. Okay. So oxygen, which takes two electrons and makes a negative two or two negative charge. The reason that I write two negative is because this is not a mathematical term. It's saying how many I have and what do I have. I have two negative charges, which are extra on this oxygen atom. That makes this an oxygen ion or an oxide ion. Okay, so our oxide ion. Let's do a little bit of accounting on protons and electrons because this is all about the charge, guys. Okay, so now oxygen has and always will have eight protons. Okay, it's element number eight. It's sentenced to having only eight protons. That's what oxygen is. But the electrons can change because the electrons are the outside face of an atom. So now if I've got two extra electrons, that makes ten electrons. Where did these extra electrons come from? They came from the magnesium as a part of the negotiation between the two. Oxygen went into their magnesium and said, I want your two electrons, give them to me, and took them away. So oxygen gained electrons. So we know that oxygen, therefore, was reduced. Okay, so now we know that oxygen, therefore, is reduced. And the way that I remember these two things is remember that really nice acronym, Oil rig, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. And this has saved many of the grade 11s and 12s in trying to understand which one is oxidation and reduction. But now, some of you might be wondering, we haven't actually dealt with why it's called reduction. I know why it's called oxidation, because oxygen likes to take things away from other elements, and specifically electrons. Oxygen steals electrons. But now many other elements can also do oxidation. Any element which likes to take electrons from other things can do oxidation to them. So I can oxidize magnesium, but I can oxidize it with almost any non-metal. In fact, the best oxidizing agent 
And this is really, really a strange thing. The best thing which can do oxidation to magnesium is actually not oxygen itself, but fluorine. Now, it's very important that oxygen can do oxidation because oxidation is the way that my body manufactures energy. And oxidation is very, very important to me. It rusts the car, it rusts the parts on the house which are made out of metal, but it's a hugely important process for life. Okay. So now we know that oxygen can oxidize things, fluorine can oxidize things, nitrogen even can oxidize things. But what about this word reduction? Well guys, be patient, we're getting there. We're going to talk now a little bit about oxidation numbers. So we know that oxidation is the loss of electrons. Okay, so that's really important. We know that that is the loss of electrons. Oxidation is loss. Okay, because oxygen takes electrons away from things. Oxidation is loss. Now, the number which I'm going to associate with this, and this is called the oxidation number, or sometimes you'll see it in textbooks as the oxidation state, is how many electrons have been lost. Okay, so now the oxidation number tells me how many electrons are missing. Now, you might say, well, that's nice. I can say that something has an oxidation number of two. That means that it's missing two electrons, and that makes a lot of sense. We're going to get a little bit later on into the elements which have got extra electrons, which are not missing electrons. That's when we're going to deal with negative oxidation numbers. Okay, now it says that the magnesium in the example lost two electrons. So its oxidation number is positive two. And you might see that this is written differently. It's not written the same way as a charge. Oxidation numbers are mathematical terms, and you can deal with them like mathematical terms. The nice thing about this is it's the same as the charge on the ion. So magnesium inside my formula had a 2 plus charge. That was a charge on the magnesium ion. The oxidation number, therefore, is positive 2. Positive 2 means that this magnesium lost two electrons inside the process of bonding with the oxygen to make that ionic bond. Okay, so now let's start dealing with what goes on here. When magnesium underwent this reaction, it lost the two electrons. So its oxidation number increased. Ah, wait a minute. It was zero. It had no charge. Now it's positive two. Okay, now I'm going to give you a new way to look at reduction and oxidation. And it's going to seem a little bit obvious. If the oxidation number goes up, oxidation happened. Okay, so just think about that for a little bit. Oxidation number on a neutral atom was zero, and it changed to positive two. So from zero to positive two is an increase. So if my oxidation number goes up, oxidation happened. That makes a lot of sense. Oxidation number goes up, I lose more electrons, and that is oxidation. Fantastic. But what about the oxygen? Oxygen also had an oxidation number of zero. But what happened to our oxygen? It took on a different charge to magnesium. And let's just move magnesium out of the way for the moment. I want to pay attention now to the oxygen because I think it's getting left out a little bit. So oxygen had an oxidation number of zero because it was neutral. It was an element. Now inside the compound, it takes on a negative two charge. And some of our mindsetters were talking to us about this. Now if I travel from the number zero all the way across to the number minus 2, what happened to that number? Did it increase or did it reduce? Now there comes that word, reduce. So the number from 0 to minus 2 is a reduction in the number. And this is where that word actually comes from. Reduction is a reduction in the oxidation number, the lessening of that oxidation number is where the word reduction actually comes from. It's not from oil rig, it's not from my teacher's mind, it's not from my textbook, guys, it actually has a logical meaning. Okay, so now when it gained two electrons, that oxygen, you guys told me about that, it found an oxidation number of minus two. This gives us an idea, if the number is reduced from zero to minus two, reduction happens. That makes a lot of sense. Reduction is the reduction in the oxidation number. 
it went from zero to minus two. So I need to be able to control or understand oxidation numbers very well in order to see what actually went on here. Now this is where the name actually comes from. So reduction causes the reduction in the oxidation number. Now guys, I've, I've met a great many uh, grade 11s and 12s that actually don't know this. They just think that reduction is something which is the opposite of oxidation. While that is true, it doesn't actually say what reduction is. Now, anytime in science, if you don't really understand what a word means, you're going to forget it and it's going to be so hard to memorize. So, reduction is a reduction in the oxidation number. The oxidation number is the number of missing electrons. So, let's just revise what those reduction numbers were. Okay, sorry, not the oxidation. I'm getting my words muddled here. The oxidation numbers is what we're going to re revise now. Okay, so MgO, our new compound which we made. Mg had a charge of positive 2. Okay, so that means that it's oxidation number here, positive 2. Oxygen, minus 2. Now, that's no mistake, because this is a pattern that we've seen before. If you add up those two numbers, surprise, surprise, you're going to add up to 0. And that's one of the rules for assigning oxidation numbers in a compound. Now, you might say, well, Phil, that sounds kind of familiar, because... Guys, you were actually doing redox chemistry since grade 9 and 10. Anytime you learned to make a chemical formula, you had to actually know about valence and oxidation numbers. Now we're just giving it a new name. So the oxidation number of Mg is positive 2. That means that it's missing two electrons. What about oxygen? What can we say about its oxidation number? Its oxidation number is minus 2. Minus oxidation numbers mean that they have extra electrons. They have gained electrons. So oxygen was reduced. Magnesium was oxidized. Okay, now we spent a lot of time on some of the language involved here. I think it's time uh, to start dealing with some of the rules in terms of oxidation numbers. How do I go about assigning oxidation numbers? Now, you might take a look at this list, and this list is in the notes, guys. You're going to be writing furiously. If you write this down off the screen, you're going to, like, your hand's going to fall off. Okay, so don't do it. Get on the page, interact with AB, interact with the other mindsetters, and we're going to deal with some of these rules. And we have some questions for you, Phil. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Yes. Toro Faso says, does re uh, reduction of and oxidation take place in one reaction? Ah, excellent. Yes, the answer is absolutely. Okay. Now, the giving and taking is one process. We're going to separate it into two pieces, and you can actually do this in separate places, but it's all part of one reaction. What a really great question. There's some others? Yes, uh, here's one from Fortunate say, uh, saying, oxidation ta tells us how many electrons were lost. So what happens when an element gains electrons? Ah, OK, very good question. I hope she was watching very, very carefully. OK, so what happens is my oxidation number, correctly, my oxidation number tells me how many electrons are missing. But what happens if something gains electrons? Then its oxidation number will be negative. I hope that you saw that from the oxygen. If I go back to my last example, right down at the bottom there, we saw that oxygen had a negative oxidation number. That negative oxidation number means that oxygen has gained electrons instead of lost them. It's done the opposite thing. Looking right. good on the page there? Looking good. Fantastic, uh, guys. Keep asking questions. Okay, well, let's get into those rules. What do you think? I think so, too. Okay. Then we'll take the rest of the questions after. Fantastic. Okay. Now, guys, there's some very easy rules to remember when you're starting to deal with how to assign oxidation numbers. Some of them you actually already know from grade 10 chemistry. Okay, so now sometimes it seems a little bit difficult, and you might say, Phil, there's too many rules on the page. Okay, well, we're going to go through them very, very slowly. Okay, so we can find the oxidation number simply, and this is going to come up in our rules, sometimes just from the valency. That's how you've done it from grade 10. I know that magnesium, okay, magnesium is in group 2. It's an alkali earth metal. That means that it's going to take on a positive 2 charge. Oxidation number, 2 plus. And some of those will come out in our rules as we explain them. Okay, guys, these rules, you, I don't want you to memorize them. That's not how you work with these rules. I want you to sit with these rules here next to you, practice working with them, and you'll actually find that you memorize the rules quite quickly. Okay, so now let's go through them Bit by bit, we won't get through all of them before we take a break, but I'm going to give you examples as we go. 
Okay, now the oxidation number of a free element is always zero. Okay, so now we've actually dealt with this as part of our show today. The magnesium metal, the oxygen which I breathe in, has got an oxidation number of zero because it's neutral. So the atoms inside some helium or some nitrogen in the air, for example, have an oxidation number of zero. So anything which is an element still has an oxidation number of zero. It hasn't lost any electrons, and that's the reason why. Okay, now this next one might seem a little bit more obvious, okay, because we've already dealt with it before. Now the oxidation number of a monoatomic ion, okay, and oof, that sounds so complicated, but it's not. It just means an ion which only has one atom. So like Mg, 2 plus means that there's one single magnesium atom, which is ionic. So a monoatomic ion equals the charge of that ion. So remember when I said that magnesium 2 plus has got a positive 2 oxidation number. The example which we've used here in the rules is the nitride ion, which is N3 minus. Now, the name aside, if nitrogen has got a charge of negative 3 in the ion, there we go. You can actually see that its oxidation number is negative 3. That's not so hard. So if you've got Mg2+, plus, positive 2 oxidation number. Oxide ion, negative 2 charge, negative 2 oxidation number. It's exactly the same number, guys. All that you've got to do is write it in reverse. When you write it as a charge, the number comes first. When you write it as an oxidation number, you do just like you do in maths. You put the, the charge first. You say negative 3. It actually becomes algebraic. Okay, now these next couple are going to seem very, very obvious, but I think we should answer a few of those questions before we go on a break, before we climb into the real rules. Yes, sure. Um, Alan says, so oxygen is always reduced in every reaction? Uh, there's only one exception that I know of. Oxygen is excellent at being reduced. Okay, really, really nice comment there. All right, Benson says, are you saying that all nonmetals are reducing agents? Ah, okay, they have the potential to be reducing agents. These guys are coming up with such good questions. Okay, oxygen and fluorine. Now, fluorine will always be an oxidizing agent, always. Now, nonmetals in general will be reducing agents, but guys, something complicated can happen. What happens when you've got two nonmetals reacting with each other? One of them will be the oxidizing agent, one of them will be the reducing agent. Here's a bit of a hint. The closer you are to fluorine, the better the oxidizing agent you will be. So when you react sulfur with oxygen, take a look at which one likes the electrons more. Oxygen likes electrons, sulfur likes electrons, but not as much as oxygen. So sulfur will actually lose its electrons to oxygen. Sometimes nonmetals can also be reducing agents. All right. Here's the last one based on, on, on the rules that we are taking Fantastic. apart. Fantastic. Uh, what Peter says, how are you going to know the rules if you don't write them? Okay, well guys, it's not about writing down the it's rules. It's more, more about memorizing. Well, I wouldn't even go so far as to <laughs> say that. The, the idea is that the rules are actually helping you work with your periodic table, and that's where the, the magic lies. I'm going to show you with the examples how to work with the rules. I want you to have a copy of the rules there next to you, but guys, you're never going to be asked in an exam to regurgitate all of these rules. These rules will actually come to you naturally if you practice them. So now... This first example that elements are zero actually became quite a natural thing, that the ions had the same charge. And these other ones are actually uh, based on parts of the periodic table. You will always get a periodic table in a chemistry exam, and I'm going to show you how to use it more powerfully. All right, well, let's take a net break, and then we'll do that after the break. Fantastic. Right, my sisters, just stay where you are, and then have your pen ready because you're about to learn more and learn extra. See you after this. Welcome back, my sisters. Now, if you're joining us now, make sure that you get yourself a Samsung tablet or your premium smartphone from Samsung and then access the Learning Hub where we have tons and tons of revision material that you can purchase, of course, and have them on your own device. And we have a free voucher worth 100 Rand. If you have redeemed that voucher, let me know on Facebook. But otherwise, soon we'll be running a big competition for our exam school, a, a marathon competition. So be on the look for that. It, it is proudly sponsored by Samsung. For now, let's continue. 
Fantastic, guys. Get on there. Get the notes for free. Guys, join us on that. Okay, now before the break, we started talking about some of the rules. Now, some of these might actually come to you very simply, and Abby's going to be posting them on the page. And guys, again, please don't sit and try and memorize these. It's going to be too many rules. We're going to practice with them, and I'm actually going to show you that some of them make sense, and we already know them. Okay, now rule three was something new. We hadn't discussed it. It's talking about hydrogen. Now, the usual oxidation number of hydrogen is positive one. You actually know that from grade 10 because it's in group one. Sometimes there are exceptions that it can be minus one. When is hydrogen minus one? Well, guys, it, there's a few special cases where hydrogen joins onto metals, specifically from group one and two, and allows it to become a negative one. But that's not very likely. What they're trying to say is that hydrogen is usually equal to minus one, uh, sorry, positive one. It loses an electron. Now, the next one. You guys already know this. The oxidation number of oxygen. Oxygen is minus 2. Okay. Now, there are a few exceptions, and some of you managed to spot this. Sometimes there are exceptions like OF2. Now, in that case, fluorine has actually stolen electrons away from oxygen. That almost never happens, guys. It's very difficult to get oxygen to lose, um, lose electrons. Now, take it from me, guys. In high school chemistry, oxygen is generally going to take on an oxidation number of negative 2. Now, I want to deal with some of the other obvious ones. So what have we figured out now? We know that hydrogen is positive 1. We know that oxygen is negative 2. Now, what about the oxidation number of other things? What about group 1? That's the alkali metals. The alkali metals are positive 1. We already know that. The periodic table tells me that. What about group 2? Group 2 is the alkali earth metals like magnesium or strontium or barium or calcium. Okay, those guys are plus 2. Guys, we're already at rule number 6, and there is nothing new. You already know this from grade 10 and your periodic table. Okay, but what about these other ones? This is also one that you actually know. Group 7A, sometimes this is group 17 on your table. Guys, this is the halogens. This is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. What is their usual charge? Guys, it's usually minus one. Again, nothing new. Now, this one has got quite a few exceptions. Now, chlorine and bromine and iodine can actually lose electrons to oxygen and fluorine. Okay? Sometimes those can take on positive oxidation numbers. We'll deal with that in next week's episode. But let's do the rules first. Okay, now this is the really important one. The sum of all the oxidation numbers of all the atoms in a neutral compound adds up to naught. Now this is something you've already done. Anytime you made a chemical formula, you added up the oxidation numbers so that oxidation numbers added up to zero so that the charges cancelled out. We just did it with our MgO. Mg plus 2 oxygen minus 2 that adds up to 0 very very nice if i know rule number 8 that all the oxidation numbers must add up to 0 in a neutral compound that gives me immense power okay so now over here rule 9 the sum of the oxidation numbers in a polyatomic ion now you might say oof so many words so, such complicated stuff and it's actually greek and oh wow What's going on? Guys, you've, you've seen polyatomic ions. SO4 2 minus, the sulfate ion. What they're saying is that the oxidation numbers for the sulfur and the four oxygens over there should add up to zero. Now, that's incredibly powerful. And let's deal with some examples. I want to use the last few minutes of this lesson to deal with oxidation numbers in compounds. So let's do exactly that. Okay, now I want to calculate the oxidation numbers of the elements in the following compounds. Now you might say, Phil, when are we going to get to your half reactions and using the redox table? Guys, this is the groundwork. Without a basement, you can't have a building. And this is the building blocks for redox chemistry. Okay, so let's try and follow our rules when we assign the oxidation numbers for NaCl, strontium bromide, iron oxide, and all of these interesting things. Okay, so sodium chloride, I'm a fan, it's table salt. Now, here's an interesting fact for you. Because of redox chemistry, salt doesn't kill me. 
And you might say, well, why would salt kill you? It makes my food taste good. Well, guys, if you took the element sodium and the element chlorine, you took them separately from each other, both of them would kill you. Sodium is a highly explosive metal when you put it in water. And I'm full of water, guys. If I put a lump of sodium in my mouth, it would explode. What about chlorine? Guys, we use chlorine to kill things. And it would kill me too. Guys, you put chlorine inside bleach and you put it inside the pool to kill the algae and the bacteria and all the nasty things. But through an amazing redox reaction, sodium gives away an electron, chlorine takes an electron, and they make my, tooth, my food taste amazing. Okay, now this blows my mind. Sodium chloride is an amazing substance. It's proof that redox chemistry is incredibly powerful. Now let's deal with the oxidation and the reduction happening inside here by assigning the oxidation numbers. Okay, so sodium. Now, sodium is inside a compound, so I know that sodium is in group 1 as well. Now, sodium's in group 1, so it means that it has a positive charge of 1. Guys, this could not be easier. I know that sodium has got an oxidation number, therefore, of positive 1. This is part of the rules. This is part of the grade 10 chemistry, which I already know. If I have a periodic table, I know that group 1 elements take on an oxidation number of positive 1 when they're inside compounds. See how easy this is. What about a group 7 element like chlorine? Now, chlorine likes to gain one electron. Ah, if it gains one electron, that means that it's got a negative oxidation number of negative 1. Okay, so this is not too bad. What about strontium and bromine? A very unusual compound. It's not something you're likely to put on your food, guys. It won't happen. But let's deal with strontium. Okay, so strontium. Mm. Strontium is found in group 2. So it makes a positive 2 charge. Well, that means that its oxidation number is positive 2. What about bromine? Guys, bromine, the same rule applies. So bromine forms a negative 1 charge. It's in group 7. It's a halogen. So its oxidation number is minus 1. So these were really, really easy examples of how to assign the oxidation numbers of strontium and bromine. That tells me the individual story of each one of those elements. Now here's where the business end of things are. Okay, guys, this iron oxide over here is the source of lots of worry for people. This is the chemical formula for rust. It's one of the compounds which is present, and, and it's one of the reasons. Fe2O3 makes a reddish rust color. It's also responsible for the red color inside my veins. Um, okay, so what's happening with Fe2O3? Let's assign the oxidation number. Okay, so this all sounds very easy. I say, oh, okay, Fe2, oh, wait a minute. I don't have a rule for Fe. That's kind of weird. Hmm, what am I going to do now? I'm going to look at oxygen. I know oxygen. Oxygen, which makes a 2 minus iron, has got an oxidation state or an oxidation number of minus 2. You might say, but that still doesn't tell me anything about iron. It does, guys. There's a magical trick that's going to happen here. I know that rule number 8 says that all of the oxidation numbers should add up to 0. Okay, now I'm going to make a very simple equation. I'm going to say inside iron oxide, two Fe atoms plus three oxygen atoms add up to zero. Now, we don't know the Fe oxidation numbers, but we do know the oxygen numbers. There we go. Now I've got an equation I can solve. If I find... Fe on its own, I will find that Fe has got a positive 3 oxidation number. And guys, if you struggled to use stock notation last year, this is the magic bullet. I can use algebra to help me. I can use very simple algebra to figure out the oxidation number of unknown elements. So the correct name of this is iron 3 oxide. So this is iron Three, and what they were actually doing last year is dealing with oxidation numbers. They just didn't tell you about it. Okay, so this is iron 3 oxide. What about this next one? And we're going to do this quickly. One nitrogen plus three oxygens 
adds up to a total of negative 1. Guys, if you calculate the oxidation state of nitrogen, you're going to find that it's positive 5. And this proves that non-metals can also take on a positive oxidation number. I want you to practice this and join us again next week when we talk more about redox chemistry. Unfortunately, time. <laughs> always. <laughs> As always, it is always jealous. But otherwise, I enjoyed this lesson and the mindset is, though they still have some questions, remember you can also add our help desk, submit your questions via the help desk on your mix it. So make sure that you do that. Otherwise, from us to you, we just want to say yip, which means yours in peace, AB.